Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thanks for joining us. There's a recent national survey that shows that despite progress, adults living with type 1 diabetes, or T1D, still struggle with the impact that the uh, disease has on their lives. Our guest is Dr. George Grunberger with the Grunberger Diabetes Institute, and he's going to talk with us today about the results of a uh, T1D unmet needs survey. Welcome to the program, Dr. Thank you so much, Neil, for having me. Explain to our listeners uh, the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Well, thanks for the question because it's often confusing. So let me just try to break it down uh, pretty quickly. There are about 30 million people in the U.S. today struggling with diabetes. Majority of those have type 2 diabetes, uh, which has been associated with obesity. And in that condition, people don't make enough insulin, and the insulin they make doesn't work properly. Mm-hmm. In type 1, T1D, about 1.5 one million people have that in the U.S., mm-hmm. and those people have a condition which the body itself destroys the cells which make insulin in the pancreas. And mm-hmm. so they make no insulin. As a result, people with T1D are absolutely dependent on insulin for their cell lives just to survive. So this, this T1D unmet needs survey, uh, I'm going to assume by the name of the survey that, that it addressed many of the unmet needs of people who are suffering. Uh, talk about this survey. What were the results? What did you discover? Okay, thank you very much. So that survey, which was actually conducted by Harris Poe <laughs> and the American Association of Clinical Androcrinologists in collaboration with Lexicon and Sanofi, uh, surveyed both endocrinologists, so the specialists who treat T1D, and the adults with T1D living in the U.S. to examine sort of both the attitudes about what they think is currently going on as far as the advances. And, you know, most endocrinologists felt that the advances will eventually lead to cure, so did the patients. But it also, as far as the unmet needs, uncovered that about 9 out of 10 adults living in the U.S. with T1D uh, felt that the disease, living the disease, adds stress to their lives. And it's something which people don't really understand because, you know, the advances are exciting. People might hear about advances, but the fact is, until there is cure, these patients have to deal with the sort of struggles of the ordinary non-diabetic people don't have to worry about. So about half of them avoid going out to eat. They avoid social gatherings. Uh, they avoid uh, present exercise and the challenges just just the sort of ordinary living are faced because they struggle with maintaining the blood sugar levels uh, or their target so so that survey did both number one just it highlighted the enthusiasm about advances and hope for a cure but also the struggles patients still face and that's the unmet need what do we do with uh, managing disease until we have cure in, in your opinion, what would you say is the most glaring thing that uh, folks suffering with diabetes, type 1 diabetes, um, are, are dealing with? And on the other side of that, what would you say is the most exciting advancement that would sure. give these people hope? Yeah. So again, I think that, it, and the survey highlighted also, the major struggle is, again, keeping the blood sugar within that recommended range. Because there's a very narrow range of blood sugars, which is safe. Because if the sugars are too high, they will then lead long-term complications of the disease. Uh, If they are too low, obviously not going to be functional because if the brain doesn't see enough sugar, uh, eventually you can go and lose consciousness and go to coma. So the major struggle is how do you keep that sugar in range? And I think that most recent exciting advance is the ability of patients to monitor the sugar levels continuously even without the need for the finger sticks, because until now, all they could do is, several of the day, prick the finger and check the blood for the sugar levels. Uh, now, there are recent advances with the sensors they can put you know, on their arm or their tummy. Uh, you can actually continuously monitor the sugar levels, and therefore, you can actually also can predict what you're going to in the next 15 to 30 minutes. That sort of helps to decrease the stress because at least you have an idea which way the sugar is heading. 
You know, doctor, with so many people uh, who are living with type 1 diabetes who are not uh, reclusive, can we do uh, not recognizing as folks who don't recognize the stress that they're going through, you know, on, on their job or just riding on the bus or, you know, choosing to go out with people and uh, mingling socially? What can we do as people who aren't suffering to be more sensitive and recognize the stress that they uh, deal with? Well, I think you sort of hit on the major thing, to be more sensitive, because uh, just maybe educate yourself a bit to understand and put, or put yourself in their shoes. Think about it. I mean, everything you do, the way you move, uh, if you exercise, what you eat, when you eat, with whom you eat, all the stresses will eventually result in a fluctuation of blood sugar. And so just to be cognizant of the fact that uh, those patients have to know, for example, when you go eat out, how many grams of carbohydrates are in that snack or a meal, okay? I recognize that everything they eat will result in increased blood sugar levels unless they cover that with the amount of insulin, just, which is just right. And so just sort of be sensitive to those needs and uh, try to put yourself in their shoes for a bit uh, before you make sort of maybe the casual suggestions, okay, about, uh, you know, going for a drink or having a yeah. snack or, or just even going for a run. Where can our listeners go and learn some more online? So the, for more information, they should go to a website, gobeyondinsulinalone.t1d.com. Dr. George Grunberg, thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio today. Well, thank you much, uh, Neil, for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says become a patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the become a patron button, and support us if you can.